What's up guys and welcome to the Guilds of Ravnica booster box opening here for the It Resolves channel sponsored by our good friends over at Grand Slam Cards and Collectibles. The link is in the description below. I would highly suggest checking them out. Uh, we're hoping to get an eBay link from them so in case you're not in this area you'll be able to shop with them still. But if you are in this area, South Carolina, North Carolina kind of region, I would definitely check them out. They have redone the entire store. It looks fantastic. Uh, they do commander uh, tournaments every Saturday at 5 p.m. Definitely fun. They're looking to get into standard. I know they're doing a standard draft tonight even. Uh, so if you're in the area, definitely check them out. They are awesome guys. Uh, but without further ado, let's jump into this box opening. I am so excited. Uh, I really, really love this set. Uh, I've gotten to play with it a little bit though not as much as I would actually like uh, at this point. I didn't get to pre-release, unfortunately, uh, but Will and I did get the opportunity to split a box and do our normal, you know, we split a box, we both build decks, and we go through it. Uh, something that we're looking to do, which is a little bit different because uh, this is obviously sort of a unique two-color set, uh, is we're actually looking to take that entire box, basically uh, throw everything into their, their guilds, so the five guilds will actually put every card that we can think of, uh, oops, excuse me, uh, every card uh, in its actual rightful guild, uh, and then we'll go through and build decks for each guild and then play test all the way through. Uh, that's something that we're kind of excited to do. Um, just because we don't normally get to do something like that, like M19, you really can't do something like that. Uh, but, um, it would be really, really fun. Our first rare here is an Ionize, and we do have a pause for reflection. Uh, that's kind of cool. We'll put tokens there. Okay. Um, so, we are pretty excited about this set. Uh, we do have a lot to talk about with this set in terms of podcast content. Uh, some of it we've already touched on, so you'll prop you should definitely go back and check all that out. Uh, Hatchery Spider, by the way, is awesome in draft. Uh, we were able to uh, play that in my Golgari deck, and it was sweet. Holy crap, it was good. Um, but yeah, so lots of lot, lots and lots of awesome stuff with this set. Uh, I unfortunately don't have a gauge on the best cards long term. Uh, obviously, Assassin's Trophy is sitting at the top in terms of value. It's a great, great card. Uh, the, some people are saying it's the replacement for... Uh, oh my gosh, Abrupt Decay. I almost forgot it. Uh, which it very well might be... Um, oh. And speak of the devil, uh, Assassin's Trophy, a great card, uh, definitely the most expensive card in the set right now. I believe at the time of recording, it's sitting between like 18 and 20 bucks uh, on Card Kingdom. Uh, but uh, there's uh, there's just so much good stuff in this set. I feel like it's, it's really, really going to be a good time for Standard. Uh, this is the first time in a while that I've been excited for Standard. Uh, normally I'm not, as most of you guys know, uh, I'm much more of a collector than a player. And I'm much more of a cube or modern player than I am a standard player. Uh, I just, standard generally doesn't really have much that I'm interested in. Uh, and so I usually don't play it. But in this instance, there are a lot of decks that are really exciting. Some of which uh, we've already done deck techs on. We've done two so far. Uh, one was Sultai Midrange, which is really the one that I'm just beyond excited for. Uh, Response Resurgence is our rare there. Um, Really, really excited for that deck. I think it will change based off based from the list that uh, Brad Nelson put together and the one that we did the deck tech on. Uh, I don't necessarily think that's where it's going to end up exactly, uh, but I do think uh, he he brings a lot of really good points to light that I think we will uh, try and see in the the final list. Um, specifically, that the creatures with the EOT abilities are really, really going to be the main sort of backbone of that deck. Uh, just that they're going to come in, do a lot of damage, uh, immediately get a lot of value, and then with Muldrotha as the top end, uh, ideally you'll be able to, to pull out just tons of extra value, uh, which would be so sweet. I would love that. So uh, that deck looks really, really cool, uh, and I also like that we get to play with Muldrotha finally uh, in standard and not just sort of as a brew deck. Blood Operative is our rare. Um, the other deck uh, that we did a deck tech on was Is It Spells, and um, I really like that deck as well. Uh, it's reminiscent, in my mind, uh, of the sort of Kiln Fiend slash Nivix Cyclops style decks. Uh, Thief of Sandy, this card is awesome as well. Uh, where, basically, it's... I don't want to say it's a Voltron strategy, because it's not necessarily a Voltron strategy, but, like, 
uh, you really don't run too many creatures. I think that deck ran like 12 creatures, uh, and honestly only 8 of them are actually worth like dealing damage with. Uh, deafening at Clarion, if I am saying that correctly. Um, so it's it's not like it's built up to, to just deal tons of damage with a ton of little creatures or anything like that. It's really meant to play a ton of high value spells uh, and then punch through damage with the uh, Crackling Drake and Enigma Drake, uh, both of which are absolutely fantastic. Necrotic Wound, uh, interesting card. Charnel Troll, I love this card. Uh, again, ended up with him in the sealed pool and he was awesome. Uh, but yeah, so basically you're you're playing a bunch of high value spells, you're get, gaining card advantage is really the goal, uh, and then long term you're building up your drakes and then just being able to swing in for a ton. Ooh, Tristani Discordant, our first mythic. Uh, this card is awesome. Legendary creature Dryad, one four for three, a green and a white. Other creatures you control get plus one, plus one. <laughs> Ooh, excuse me, guys, it's early in the morning. I apologize. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, create two 1-1 one, one white creature soldier tokens with lifelink, and at the beginning of your end step, each player gains control of all creatures they own. Uh, I love this card. There's already been some brews with it in Commander, uh, and it's it's just sweet. Uh, I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, so lots of fun stuff. There are a number of other decks that we've been looking at. Uh, I know Will has a, his own sort of homebrew. Ooh, Steam Vents. There we go. I was wondering if we would hit a uh, Shockland. Uh, we only got one in our previous box, which is a little... That seems kind of weird to me. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. But, uh, yeah, he has a homebrew for a Demir build, which uh, he's supposed to send me today, actually. If it's sweet, I'm going to do a deck tech on it, because uh, he has promised me it is. So I'm pretty stoked about that. Uh, Swiftblade Vindicator and a Fearless uh, Hal Birder. Birder? Uh, I know how to pronounce things. Um... But yeah, lots of really, really cool stuff. We're going to see a huge meta shift, in my opinion. Uh, we talked about this on the last podcast episode, where... Uh, ooh, Divine Visitation, another mythic. Uh, if one or more creature tokens will be created under your control, that many 4-4 angel tokens with flying and vigilance are created instead. Uh, this card's pretty sweet. I really like this one. Um, but yeah, so... We talked about this on the last podcast episode, and we, we pulled the decks that were sort of sitting at the top uh, for the last uh, number of months, really, in the previous standard meta, which uh, essentially boiled down to... Ooh, Beast Whisper. I love that card as well. Uh, essentially boiled down to Mono Red or Rakdos Red. Uh, towards the end, it was mostly Rakdos Red to splash for that removal. Uh, but for a while, it was obviously just Mono Red. And then on top of that, we had uh, Blue White Control... Uh, as well as, or excuse me, blue-black control, or blue-black mid-range. Uh, ooh, Izoni, a thousand-eyed, I love that card too. Uh, as well as uh, Esper control, mostly splashing for Teferi. Uh, all the decks were sweet, but we had seen them at the top of the meta for a while. Uh, especially uh, the Rakdos and Mono Red decks, they've just been absolutely insane. Uh, Erratic Cyclops. Uh, we've just seen them at the top of the meta for so long, and it's it's been a bit stale in my mind. Uh, obviously, that's f like a lot of people enjoyed the last standard. It seems so that's cool. I'm happy about that. But like Sacred Foundry, finally. Uh, but like it just I don't know. It it didn't sit right with me. Um, so I was really unexcited by the last standard environment. It just didn't do anything for me at all. Uh, and so it was a little uh, camaraderie. It was a little stale, but uh, moving forward, we fully expect for a lot of those decks to to change dramatically. Uh, I don't think Mono Red or even Rakdos Red will be quite as good anymore. Uh, I do think Boros uh, has an has some some legs to it. Experimental Frenzy. Speaking of, uh, that card goes in that deck. Um, I think it's it's fine. It's it's pretty sweet. I don't know if it's good enough and consistent enough though. Uh, as with the previous sort of mono red Rakdos red decks, uh, those decks were just so good, and they had inevitability built in, uh, which these decks will probably not have. Uh, ritual, ritual of soot, uh, and so last stat, guys. Um, I just I feel like we're not going to see quite as many of those decks. Uh, obviously, token strategies we will definitely see. Uh, I'm not sure how good they will be, but there are a lot of really awesome cards for it. Dawn of Hope is awesome. Um, 
a lot of really strong cards for tokens so i'm pretty stoked to see what people will brew for that uh if we find a list that we're excited about obviously we'll share it with you guys uh but it it does seem really really sweet um we also ooh, light of the legion uh really cool rare um we also have that soul time mid-range deck which i am absolutely insane i i think that deck's so sweet uh soul tide just gets so much right now uh but also golgari mid-range just taking out the blue and just leaving it golgari seems pretty solid uh chamber sentry uh they're just golgari gets so much in terms of constructed viability uh the removal's insane the creature package is pretty solid uh, and then the top end is great. It's got the underground lit or the under realm lich, excuse me, as one of my favorite cards. Ooh, Tajek, Tajik, uh, Legion's Edge, uh, mispronouncing everything. Um, but it's just got so much, so much to work with. Uh, and so I really, really think that green black is going to be the base for a lot of these mid range decks. And we may see some of them. Ooh, speaking of crackling Jake, uh, we may see some of them. Uh, splashing other colors, Runaway Steamkin, ooh, and a Foil Hatchery Spider. This is a good pack. This card has been speculated as uh, one of the cards that's hopefully going to hit uh, some fun decks, maybe even in Modern. Uh, I think it's a really sweet card. I'm not sure if it's good enough yet, but we'll, we'll, we will see. Uh, but yeah, so I'm excited because it's going to be a huge meta shift. Another Mythic, Chance of Glory, one a red and a white and instant creatures you control gain indestructible take an extra turn after this one at the beginning of the turns of, of that turns end step you lose the game so it's an all or nothing kind of style card interesting for sure um so yeah i, I think just the shift in meta is going to be awesome uh it's going to be something that i have really been looking forward to uh and as as guilds comes in uh i'm actually really excited about the cards that we have for this risk factor another great card um it just it feels it feels really Ravnica-esque which is obvious I mean that's like goes without saying but uh, I do feel like they did a lot of things correctly with this set uh, which honestly I was worried about uh, chromatic lantern a great pull uh, I was a bit worried about I I mean you know wizards hasn't instilled the best consumer confidence uh, and so it it made sense that a lot of people were speculative uh, guild mages forum Oh, and another foil rare, a Assure Assemble. Nice. Two foil rares, that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, so last three packs, by the way. Um, but yeah, overall, really, really excited about uh, Guilds of Ravnica in standard. I think it's going to be awesome. Gruesome Menagerie, this is a card I'm going to brew with. Um, it really, really fun uh, standard environment we hope uh, is coming up. Obviously, we will see uh, over the next coming weeks and months, but it does look to be quite awesome. Uh, we got another foil here. Arclight Phoenix, uh, a mythic 3-2 for 3 and a red flying in haste at the beginning of combat on your turn. If you've cast 3 or more instants and, sor and or sorcery spells, uh, return Arclight Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, pretty good, not bad at all. Uh, but yeah, last pack. Um, really excited guys, hopefully you all are as well. Uh, lots of really, really cool stuff. By all means, send us your brews, send us your... Uh, your pre-release packs, whatever you got there, that would have been kind of cool to know. Uh, and another good uh, card that I want to brew with, uh, Convine, Connive, excuse me, Concoct. Uh, I really like the idea of doing, ooh, and a Foil Conclave, Guild Mage, of doing a uh, Reanimator deck. I think that would be really fun. Uh, so four Mythics, uh, two Shocklands, an Assassin's Trophy, some pretty good stuff. Uh, overall, not a bad box, not an amazing box, but not bad either. Uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Again, thank you to our awesome sponsor, Grand Slam Comics and Collectibles. Check their link out in the description below. But with that, I'm going to get out of here, guys. I'm looking forward to the standard season. Hopefully you are too. I'll see you in the next video.